This is musicians in bars getting beer. Yay. And we're in the green room of the horseshoe. How's it going? Super. Where's the beer? I don't know. Yeah. I'm not over at the bar, I guess. <laughs> or it's before sound check, even. Tell us about the band. So we are Hot Lips. It's Alex, Keith, Carly. And uh, we're kind of like an alternative rock, little bit of electro in there um, type. It's hard to kind of, you know, pinhole the genre exactly, but we have a heavy influences, bit of fuzz, bit of bit of synth, yeah. punk, shoegaze. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So tell us more. There's no guitar in our band. There's no guitar in our band. Really? There's yeah. no guitar in your band. That's cool. Let's talk about then your role. You know. Being in the front. Yeah. I love it. I love the dynamic, and um, it's kind of like having two personal bodyguards, which is lovely. But um. Yeah, no, taking on this, this role as a singer of a band is new for me. And uh, I, I'll be honest, I wasn't exactly sure how I'd fall into it because I've spent the last decade being a drummer. And I was very comfortable being in the back. So stepping out, um, I knew it was something I wanted to do, but I wasn't sure exactly what type of you know, front person I would be. And I kind of envisioned myself, you know, maybe I'd be that girl that runs around and like, you know, falls on the floor. And, but I, you know, I'll, I do that a little bit, but not really. I, I mostly just kind of like, uh, I have a different style where I, I engage the audience, but I'm not like super flashy. And, uh, and it works, it works. I'm comfortable, people respond. And, uh, but I'm still, I'm still learning. I have only been doing this now two years, so. We've all separated kind of our our roles a little bit, mm -hmm. and so Keith does a lot of the gig planning, Alex does a lot of the social media, and then I'll do a lot of the creative writing and video stuff and that that sort of thing. Well, tell us about the writing. How's Howard? So how it's been working so far is that I'll um, I'll just write the melody and uh, I'll throw like a basic drum whatever underneath and a basic uh, bass line. And I'll bring it to them and say, what do you think about this idea? And then we'll jam it out in the room and restructure it. And then if, if we like it, then it's the song. And that's pretty much how we've been doing it. Are they written as the band? We do write them as the band. I'll present them um, as a song written, mm -hmm. but it's always changed. And I mean, I can't play the way they play their instruments, right? So I do rely on them to help me really tweak the song to what it becomes. Anybody want to add to that one? They're her songs. <laughs> <laughs> She's a really talented songwriter. Yeah. She's yeah. just very modest. There's a song called Black Heart Blue uh, that's on our like last EP. And I like playing it. I look forward to playing it every single night. There's another song that we've never recorded, but it's been a mainstay in the set called Gunmetal Girl, which is a lot of fun to play. It's like that's that's the one in the set when it comes up. We mm -hmm. all sort of like light up. Full agreement? Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I have my personal favorites, too. Go ahead. Um, I love uh, Day of the Dead. When Carly wrote that, and where it kind of came from in her life was a, was, it's a really meaningful song. Uh, and I remember when she sent me the demo, I think I was on vacation, and I just heard it, and it, was, it blew me away. Um, and End of the World I love playing just because it's a really, really active song on bass, and it helps me keep my chops up. That's cool. And did you know this? I kind of had an idea, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Alex likes a little bit more of the heavier stuff and Keith likes a lot of the like groovy tunes. And so does that influence it then in, into what you're going to write next? Um, a little bit. I mean, uh, the song we're going in to record next is a little bit different than what we've had out so far. Um, we've kind of taken... Uh, a bit of a down tempo turn, but it's still heavy. It still uh, moves, so it kind of incorporates both of those things. Actually, I think into the new song. The objective with this band was from the get go. We had two things: was we wanted to be a songwriting oriented band. We really wanted to, our primary focus to be making the best songs we could. Um, the second was we, after playing in so many bands for so many years separately we sort of realized that like you know to stand out you have to do something different so the first time Carly and I met was having beer 
we sort of, we decided that yeah, let's do this, let's meet up and jam. But whatever we do, we didn't really know. It was like, it has to be different. And when Alex came in, um, the bass, it was like super clear. It's like, we don't need a guitar player. No guitar. That's going to be our thing. Um, heavy synth, heavy bass, big drums, good, great songs. And, and that was the, uh, it was a simple, very focused vision that we had. Sort of from... Took us maybe a couple shows to really figure out exactly what we were doing. We we're trying to have different hats here and there, but when we sort of arrived at it, it's been it's been a lot easier to get to where we want to be by knowing exactly what we want to be. Top that. <laughs> been, I'm not sure how. But... So tell us about the live experience, Carly. You're not just coming to see a rock show. This is a performance-based stage show. With our music and because uh, our songs are so melodic and dynamic we had to have some lights so we have LED uh, LED light setups um, we have strobes we have fog machine our life shows like a Dragon Ball Z episode <laughs> 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 like what Nine Inch Nails would do or a band mm -hmm. like Combi Christ would do on a mm -hmm. massive scale and we just sort of scaled it down to, to work into these these clubs tell us where you've been playing so, you know, like most indie bands, we started out playing um, familiar gigs around town, um, getting our feet wet, getting comfortable on stage, uh, trying out the material. And then uh, we moved outside of town doing, you know, like... Hamilton, Barrie, um, Ottawa. Ottawa. Yeah. yeah. Uh, any memorable shows you want to talk about? Three Teeth? Three oh, teeth. that was a great show, yeah. yeah. Sort of the first time we were ever... It was the first show where we were asked to like open for someone mm -hmm. at the, the support slot. And it was actually a show that the two of them had tickets to. Yeah. <laughs> they, were, they were planning on going. And it was a, an, an industrial band from L.A. Yeah. called uh, Three Teeth. Great. Um, and they were, they were so cool to us and nice to us. And the, the show sounded great. The crowd was great. And it was sort of, it was one of the first times we felt ourselves sort of move up a notch get oh, that, that's great. that first mm -hmm. opening slot um, I get that feeling when I'm in this room yeah <laughs> it's that that little bit of that little bit of sort of satisfaction watching what you're doing build and grow yeah so that I would say that was probably also a, a Conline crush oh we're right yeah. oh, cool. we opened for a Conline crush they're they were great guys as well really amazing to see like top-notch musicians that are so down to earth so it's been, uh, I mean, we've been fairly fortunate in the short time we've been together that we've opened up with some pretty big acts and bands that we really love to watch. So we basically get a free show out of it, too. Tell us about that show. Conline Crush? Yeah. Uh, it was uh, it was fun. Um, you know, we, it was, uh, I don't know, we, we, played a, we played a great set. And then afterwards, we got to watch this band that I grew up watching. Uh, live and then hang out with them. So it was a pretty, pretty surreal experience. So tell us about the hang then. Is there any good stories? Uh, Not that we can repeat exactly. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> What's on the recording front? We're glad you asked. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so we are just about to go back to the studio to cut a new single. And uh, we're going to track some other stuff while we're in there. But uh, yeah, we have our single release planned for the spring. And we're going to, uh, I think we're just going to stick on that train and do do the singles for now. Can you give us the title? We're playing it tonight for the first yeah, time. Yeah, we are. Let's just okay. say it. Yeah. It might change. Yeah, it might change. It's, it's called okay. I Wonder right now. Okay. But, um, we're also recording Day of the Dead soon. Yep, yeah, we're recording Day of the Dead also. Okay. I, I was noticing, just sort of doing research, that like hip-hop artists tend to just release singles. They don't come out with albums. It's just sort of single, single. Sure. So really, rather than spending, you know, four months getting an EP together um, and, and pushing that, our idea was just to just to push singles. Four singles? Four, and then, then, and then by the time, EP. yeah, so you, and then you have an EP and Makes you sort of sense. build your presence on the streaming sites and on the social media. Mm -hmm. and at the same time, we can keep playing shows, uh, practicing and, and doing everything we we, it's, yeah, we it's, sort of built an MO of, of doing everything together rather than just like taking time away from playing live because I mean the three of us live to play live. So. Okay, so let's talk about influences. Who wants to start that one? Go for it. 
I can start if you want. You can go for it. Um, <laughs> I've been I've I've been heavily influenced uh, primarily by Nine Inch Nails as well as a lot of heavy metal and uh, and a combination of heavy metal and electronica. So Nine Inch Nails sort of marries everything together. What metal era? Uh, f- all of them. Um, I th- thrash was something I grew up so the eighties yes. Bay Area. Uh, era was really great. A lot of new mer- metal, specifically like American metal, like Lamb of God, coming out, yeah, okay. things like that. Um, one of the only times I've ever thought I was going to die in a concert was in Lamb of God, and I absolutely loved it. <laughs> um, so it, it, it. Unfortunately, somebody did once. Yeah, no, they did, and that's why he spent time in prison. But yeah. that's uh, yeah. It, so it, it was really for me. It was a lot of heavy influences, um, but a lot of more complex, heavier influences, and I can hear sort of the similarities with metal and classical and a lot of electronic music as well. And how does that carry? I, growing, like, it, it's been, it's been I, I've never played in a band with someone who comes from a heavy metal background. Um, I predominantly grew up listening and liking, like, punk punk rock. Um, so the heavy metal and punk, they kind of, I think Motorhead is where everyone Motorhead's, meets in the middle. Yeah, Motorhead's and Nine Inch Nails in a way, too, yeah. sort of. So we're, we're, and we're both all three of us were all fans of bands that have not only like a cool aesthetic and they're heavy, but they if you don't have good songs, there's no point. Sure. So I, I grew up like I really like uh, bands like Black Flag. I can hear a lot of their influences in bands like Queens of the Stone Age, and that's one thing that I was very conscientious about starting the, when we started the band was to try to get weird sounds, sounds that are unique to us. We're never chasing like that Jimmy Page tone or you know, that Chris Noacelic bass sound. We wanted, like, everything to just be a hot lip sound, so we're always trying. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. You want to elaborate on that, too? Yeah, um, our individual influences are all a bit more on the heavy side, but they're all very different, and uh, I think that's really important in how our sound came to be. Um, I share the same influences with Nine Inch Nails and um, heavier uh, IMX, if you know him and love him, Chris Corner, Sneaker Pimps. Um, but also, the vocals are very kind of uh, feminine, and that comes from some other... So how does that tie in, though? It, it comes from some other um, influences of mine that it just kind of came out naturally as the way I, I sang and wrote, and it just, with their style of working, it just really was complimentary with the heavy mm. and the and the light female vocals. So it's just dynamic. Yeah, exactly. Yin and yang. Cool. And so how do we find you? Uh, we have our website, hotlipstoronto.com, and Facebook, Facebook. Alex Music. Um, Alex's personal phone number. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do this again to me. Uh, Instagram. I wrote it in the bathroom wall. Oh, okay. Well, that, yeah, does that work negatively somehow? No, no. <laughs> Oddly enough, it hasn't. Okay, good. It's, it's worked out great for me. <laughs> Source of some love songs, perhaps. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Or <laughs> sorrow <laughs> and pain. <laughs> Going in, Carly, you weren't finished with that. It was. Uh, yeah, no. There's Facebook, the Facebook and the Instagram. Dot com. Um, Instagram too. Yeah. Is Instagram under the band name? Yep, yeah, Hot Lips. Hot Lips Toronto. Hot, Hot Lips, Lips Music. music. Mm. Yep. Okay. And we have Bandcamp. Yep. Spotify, Spotify. Apple Music. Apple, yep. Anybody we didn't thank that you want to thank? Oh, uh, Crownlands for having us tonight. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Super excited to play with those guys. Yeah, those guys are awesome. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're, they're a scary good band. Yeah, yeah, they're really cool. I also appreciate the fact that they don't have a bassist and we don't have a guitarist. <laughs> so it's kind of... There's so much hair on the stage with just two guys. I love I this. So much yeah. hair. It brings me back to when I was playing metal and I had that hair too. I just, it makes me miss it. <laughs> That's great. Well, thanks for being on Musicians in Bars Getting Beer. Thank, Thank you. you. Hot lips. Cheers. <laughs>